Hey guys, it's Tuesday again, so welcome back to the Social Distance Podcast. Another cracking episode. We talk about the new Drive to Survive type series of uh, on Netflix at the Tour de France this year. Eight eight teams under the microscope on net on a Netflix show. You think they're going to call it uh, Ride to Survive? Just on a just yeah. on a note. Well, Good if point. they do, you should get a clip of the ticket because you've just come up with Ride the name. to Survive. All right, okay. So what will they going. call it? Yeah, we talk about the potential Ride to Survive Netflix series at the Tour de France. We we just we find out Jonesy's not a millionaire because he's sitting here in the uh, top left corner. He wouldn't be if he was Rim a millionaire. But he he tells us all about his experience there with the great Eddie. What's his last name? Maguire. Eddie. Maguire. Um, <laughs> we talk. We touch on Paranese, Torino Adriatico. <laughs> we talk about um, our Milan terrorism. Bully, you, you two bullying terrorism. Me again. Uh, just about had a meltdown. A couple uh, of character uh, assassinations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, terrorism. The, talk uh, about that bloke who won the Hero Award who kicked the shit out of me in '99. So it's good Biffo yeah. yarns. It's got everything this show. It's got everything. He's been oh. a hero since since '99. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this show is all about bullying Jonesy. <laughs> anyway, don't forget, guys. Uh, go to manscape.com. Use the code mm-hmm. TDSP20. For uh, no, use the code SDP20. Sorry, twenty percent off free shipping. Get your lawnmower, get your weed whacker, get your ball deodorant, get your moisturisers, get your shampoos, get your lip balms. Mm. Get your there. dad's crackers, smelling beautiful, guys. All girls, great present. As we said, great that present. weed whacker. If you're a woman with bushy nostrils, sort it out. <laughs> what are you eating, Jonesy? Grapes. Oh, it's all we can beauty. afford. That's it. <laughs> I was going to have right. a steak dinner, but I got a bag of crepes. <laughs> so please, Enjoy the show, everybody. He's begging you to please go to Manscaped and please, please just buy some mm. shit. Please, please just buy something. I've stuck, I've reduced the fucking grapes. Every lawnmower 4.0 that you guys buy helps Jonesy get one get step grape. closer off. Get one out more of the grape. grape. Off the grape diet. Oh. Although these days with the current living crisis... Uh, grapes probably one of the most expensive foods you can buy. Anyway, no, these, are sh- these are shit grapes. All right. All right. Like, share, subscribe. Let's let's just run the intro and wing it like we always do and see what comes out of it. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Front kick. Just didn't pull down the jet. My radar's going pretty hard at the moment. I think we should. Will you Who shut up, man? That escalated quickly. We're going to need to get some more qualified guests on the show, eh? <laughs> Jonesy, with the exception of a new um, ball trimmer, you're, you're no more well-off than you were two weeks ago, are you? Nah, nah. I was thinking about starting a GoFundMe page to see if I can still get to the million just from people feeling sorry for me that I'm not that sharp. Because obviously we we hyped up my appearance on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. It was shot in November, so it was very difficult not to tell people what had happened on the show. Uh, and then when it came out, yeah, I mean it was a bit of a roller coaster. You know, I think people thought, yeah, you know, James is a sharp guy. He might go all the way. No, no, I got caught on a curly, bit of a flipper. And, Have you uh, come out of the experience big. like in the positive or in the negative in terms of like uh, uh, positive, mate? You know me, I love attention. So it was yeah, yeah, but they're like, oh, yeah, a bit of charisma, but he's fucking stupid. Well, there's uh, people know that about me anyway. So what have I got <laughs> to lose? You know, right. you're going in red hot, and uh, you know the switchboard lit up. A lot of people didn't know I was on it, including some of my best mates, and they're like, "What, mate? You're a millionaire?" Ah, so, oh, sorry, mate, forgot to give you a heads up. But uh, yeah, it was the same response. Like no one expected me to go far, but the fact that I got a couple right, um, obviously the the best zinger was the Billy Bowden question. And, uh, you know, I, I went into it thinking, oh, I just don't care, you know, if I win or I don't. But I had some prepared one-liners and one was around cricket. Um, but, fellas, let's just roll the tape. Let's just roll the tape. Which cricket umpire was best known for a signal known as the crooked finger of doom? A, Dickie Bird. B, Billy Bowden. C, Simon Torfel. D, David Shepherd. It's funny you mentioned cricket because millionaire is a bit like cricket. You're the bowler, I'm the batsman, and the question is the quality of the delivery. Oh, is that right? Yeah. You're going right. to have to pitch it up, Eddie, because it's definitely B, uh, B 
Billy Bowden. Because if you get it wrong, though, I'll give you that one. That's right. That's what he used to do, Billy but Bowden. This is a half tracker, mate. It's a Billy Bowden. Yeah. There he is, the New Zealand up by Billy Bowden Creek for four thousand dollars. Do you know what's interesting about those quiz shows and why they're so good? I, lo- I love, I fucking love quizzes. I, I'd be up for doing a social distance podcast quiz show if it wasn't the boringest content we'd ever produce. But I do like quizzes and I like watching the quiz shows. The, the beauty about those shows is everybody thinks, uh, everyone who goes on that show, maybe with the exception of you, Jonesy, but everybody who goes on those shows thinks that they can do it. You know, yeah. they sit at home and they watch The Chase or they watch Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and they're like, these guys are fucking idiots. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I could win that. So they all yeah. go on ap- apply because they think they can win it. But no, what? It's very rare that people do. I'm listening mm. to this one Especially in the morning. The pressure. Every morning, it's like this this podcast. I'm listening to its radio show, and they do like three questions of like name the song. And every morning, I nail all three. I'm like, fuck, I would be unreal at this. And for sure, I'd go on there and they'd stitch me up with something. And you'd be like, well, well, the thing fuck. is, the thing is, is, is I, I went in, um, and told the producers like we we had tragically a, a blow from sale who was 30 70 he passed away and he and he had four kids that he left behind and and i said to the producers you know what whatever i win i'm going to donate to um macca's kids and raise awareness for if anyone's struggling out there you know text your mate right now you know check in with them and the producers like oh that's amazing you know we'll we'll get that on for sure and i'm thinking sweet and then i was thinking well you, you tell them beforehand what your your categories are that you're best at. And one of mine was 90s music. So when I got the curveball that knocked me out, which was what was Stephen King's first novel, and I'm thinking, oh, fuck, here we go. I've got no idea. And I said to Eddie with the cricket analogy, oh, mate, you've put it right in the slot. I'll play it, but I'll probably nick it to slip. Uh, and he goes, you know, there's a leg cutter. And I was like, mate, you've swung a couple of foot. Um, and then I got it wrong. But then as I was walking off, I could hear a producer going, what the fuck? That's the wrong fucking question. Who who cued that up? And then the the next question was, you know, Billy Joe Armstrong is the lead singer of which band? And it was Green Day. I would have nailed that. So they might have had it lined up for a, a pretty good run at the title because, you know, it was this good story, mm. raising awareness for a good cause. But, you know, I, I just got screwed by someone in the back end that gave us the wrong question. So it's got nothing to do with me not being sharp. I just got screwed. By the producers. What other what other categories did you put in? That was about it. <laughs> Not his music. Not his music. music. Yeah. Not his music. Not his music. Not his film. Yeah. Not his music, film, and shit podcast content. That's I don't know it. what I'd, I. I don't think I could pick a specialist subject. There's nothing that I would back myself in anything like. Especially You're good like, at politics, you and three. Greenpeace, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, he'd be I'm good not wearing my and shit today. <laughs> yeah. be, you, yours would be yours would be music. Cycling and fence sitting, maybe. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I reckon I'd do music, music, sport, and maybe like current affairs, maybe? Current, current affairs? Geog- current current affairs? affairs? No, geography. Geography, maybe. All right. Yeah, but what's, the, the yeah. Capital, what's the capital of... Uh, Okay, let's go something. So you got to know what? geography to ask a question. That's the <laughs> yeah, problem yeah, with you. <laughs> can't even rattle off one country. <laughs> it's crazy what the spotlight can do, though. You can freeze, can't you? Exactly. you know? like, even if you That's knew a... what Stephen King's first novel was, mm. the you know, I can't even think of a country right now. I'm literally thinking. That's of a exactly what I was saying mm. about those mm. shows. It's like it's the pressure cooker environment. Like when you're sitting at home, the chase is a perfect example where you're like you've actually got oh, a yeah. bit of you're trying to answer as many questions as you can in one minute, quick fire. You're at mm. home, you, you nail, you're getting like 10 right, and these guys are getting five. But when that you're under the pump... That's experts. Like, because my, my oh, mum yeah. watches this case a little bit, and I, when I was home, I was trying to like get my head around it. So these guys, they picked them from like pub, pub quiz sort of champions. It's like a circuit in the UK, you know. It's actually like a bit of a thing. And yeah, and, and the chaser, the actual, you know, the, the main guy, he's a professional... His, he's professional mm. recall expert, you know. He's just he's just has it all in there. Mm. Yeah, they're intelligent. They're intelligent. But I reckon I, the best the best one was um, deal or no deal. That's what you want to go on because that doesn't require skill. You just got to be good at the punt, and you know that's the one where you open up the the cases, and then they offer you, do you want to take the deal or no deal? And it's for cash. That's what you want to be on. 
Mm. That was what my grandma used to watch when I went and stayed with her once. She was Greek, like, and she'd always watch Deal or No Deal, and she'd be like, "No, why don't you take the deal?" <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was the opposite. I used to get shitty when they they didn't have a risk. I'm like, "Come on, mate, like, just have a pun." And then they mm. get it wrong. And you're like, "Ooh, good call." You, know, you would have blown. You would have blown 150 grand. <laughs> Shit, so no I million, but I think you have come out of it well. Did the audience know that you were donating all the proceeds? Nah, oh no, they they do like a run through at the start, and then when they put me in the first seat, I thought, oh, here we go, I'll get a bit of airtime here. And so mm. when I went up to talk with Eddie, I knew he was going to ask me about the tour, and I thought, play the man, you know, it's Eddie's show. So when he said, you know, that must have been a highlight, I said, oh, you know, it was a great experience, but the highlight, mate, was when your great self was on the tour. But I didn't realize he was going to chew up a minute of my airtime. You know, I thought he'd go, oh yeah, yeah, whatever, and then I could get back to myself because that was the most <laughs> important part. But uh, yeah, but no, it was a, yeah, it was a great experience. Like I, I'd re- thoroughly recommend it to people and just go in, just don't give a rats, you know, just back mm. yourself. But now you basically fun. you didn't win. You still have to sell um, men's shaving products. Yeah, ball trimmers products. and yeah, you know, I'll I'll rent myself out for any product now. Yeah, you know, has there been I much um, lashback to us selling out? Has there been much fallout to you know? No, nah. no, nah, I, I think, think that we, was... did it, we, we did it pretty well. We had one guy who was like. Gave us a bit of shit, but you're always going to get, you know. What did he say? He said, um, I'm Who is he? The first... <laughs> Where does he live? <laughs> hey, Talk about he... geography. <laughs> I want addresses. It's not all It's not all bad. He said he's going to still listen to the show. He's just going to skip the first four or five minutes. So today uh, we're going to just, uh, chuck, let's just chuck, we'll chuck the ad in at like 16 minutes or something. We fucking uh, stitch yeah, him that's up. That's right. Cool ball. <laughs> But I think there would have been a few people, surely, that got the um, the weed whacker and started trimming their bum holes for sure. That was great. It's, um, it's uh, St. Paddy's Day. But this actually, this podcast oh, is. is coming out on... Actually, I'll be stage two of Catalonia when this when you guys are hearing this. So what, what do you reckon? Where, where will you be, Bules? You'll be racing? No. On Nowhere. St. Paddy's Day? Uh, no, on the release of this. Uh, no, I'll be home. Okay. I'll be at home doing the hard labor of uploading it and cutting it and so Ooh. i'm gonna make a prediction that you know am i in a good mood or am i bad mood what's happened you know it's two days of catalonia the weather forecast is fucking mm-hmm. horrific um well we don't need you to be live racing it we know what your answer would have been if we did it that night it'd be like oh mate i'm fucking creeping oh jeez, <laughs> just the cold weather like and what pisses me off when you get in the bus and people go where were you and you go mate it's fucking cold like I can't help this shit. Like fucking hell. So are we doing you know, a flashback to the Giro podcast? <laughs> yeah, you'd be right. Just enjoy yourself. Back oh, yourself, yeah. like millionaire. I, mate. Yeah. I, thought it was I actually, I didn't think this through because I was one of the like I wrote down some topics on the like that we could have spoken about today, and I wrote two things down: Jonesy on who wants to be a millionaire and Milan San Remo. But oh, right, I'll go Milan to San Remo. Milan San Remo is going to already be on when we put this out. So we can't, if we talk about we predictions, we're going to be like four days behind. Well, I have an amazing story. So there was an award given out yesterday to two Aussies that have been categorized as heroes. I don't know how this works in the country, but I think it must go through like a, a process where it goes up to federal level. And if there's a story of two heroes or a hero, they award them like a, is it an OAM or something? And they, they must get a title for that for being a hero. So what happened was there was a flight in 2017 on Malaysian flight. And there was a guy that wanted to take over the flight like a terrorist. And he said he had a bomb and he was trying to get in the cockpit. And these two surfers spear tackled him and saved, saved the flight. And they diverted it and went back to Melbourne. And I heard it on the news. I thought, unbelievable. Then when I'm driving in the car, they go, we're going to interview this guy, uh, Fabio Contu and someone else. And I, I just froze. I go, Fabio Contu, I haven't heard that name in like 21 years. What happened was when I played footy in thirds in 99, I was playing full forward and kicked nine goals on this bloke, Fabio. And <laughs> we played him two weeks earlier and he gave me like the, you know, argy bargy and everyone loves a good Biffo story on this podcast. And, and I got involved in it. So we were wrestling and just punching each other and I played shit. So the next time, the old man who was the runner at the time, he goes, listen, when you play this guy again, you don't get involved in that shit. You just go the ball. I go, yeah, okay, Dad, no worries. I kicked nine goals on this guy, and in the last quarter, this is Aussie's rule football for 
overseas people. Google it. It's a great sport. And so then um, this fight breaks out on the wing. So Nick Old Elbows Fowler just cleans up some young bloke. This is under 18s. And I didn't, you know, get into the argy-bargy all day. And I just hear this, you weak bastard. And then whack. King hit in the goal square. Knocked out cold. And then my dad sees it and this fight's going on and he sees it and I'm out cold and there's only one bloke next to me. So you do the maths on what's happened. He runs out and he goes, I'm going to fucking sue you for a million dollars, you bastard. Then my teammates are going after this bloke. And I remember running up to him when I came to, I had blood all down the face and just went up to him and was like, you happy now, mate? And just went, Phew! and spat blood all over his face. And then I got oh. sent off and... It was just a shit fight. We went to the tribunal and they didn't want to talk about that incident because they didn't have a witness. And then eventually this old bloke at the tribunal goes, I've had enough of this shit. Did a fucking seagull fly down and knock this poor kid out? You know, you explain (laughs) yourself. So he got six weeks and I I never saw him again. But he's a hero. So he learned his chops. He learned his chops way back in under 18s. Never heard that name in, you know, 21, 22 years. And then as soon as I heard this radio show go, we're going to interview one of the heroes, Fabio Conte. I was like, what? And then Googled it, same pictures, everything. Wow. Fucking fucking hero. And he would have gone on how we used to wrestle in thirds and he used to punch the shit out of me. That terrorist didn't stand a chance, man. Man. Did not stand a chance. It is set on him. That is well, enough yeah, to try to often think about, like on a plane, like what would happen, like you know. But did I tell you guys a story about the Swan Year and Mild team that that dodged the two flights? You no. was this. So this is a um, this is one of those stories where I didn't believe it, mm. and if it was if I didn't know the person that it was about, I would say bullshit. This didn't happen, and so I like I never I'd heard rumors believe it, and then until this guy actually started working for our team because he wasn't always with us. And um, so do you remember, so this guy was meant to be on um, Malaysian, the, the, the flight that went missing, you know, Malaysian mm. Airlines, whatever. MH370, I think it was. So he was booked on that flight and he was going to the airport and he got there. I, I can't remember which order it was in, in terms of how this happened, but I think he got there and the flight was overbooked. And um, he got bumped and that plane went missing. So he would have been on that flight. And obviously this was pretty mental, you know, shit you meant to be on this flight, this plane went missing, right? So fast forward a few years, the flight leaving Amsterdam that got shot down over the Ukraine, he was on that flight and he went to the airport, got stuck in traffic, missed the plane. That plane got shut down. That plane got shot down. That's unbelievable. I know that's so what I'm saying. Like is, is he been on sixty minutes? Organizational skills. I don't know. This sounds it sounds outrageous. This needs. You think this would be a bigger story, right? You think that this would be a yeah household name? But it's actually but the, it's bizarrely common. That's like, not common. That is not common. Nah, yeah. Beyond yeah. That's no, not common. What it's are you two talking flights? about? That what is sort of a bizarrely common. Is that? Oh, I know <laughs> six people like that. <laughs> what do you no, mean? It's that's quite bizarrely common. <laughs> Explain it's yourself. Sam. Some... <laughs> there's more than that's there's more than one of those stories, is what I mean. You know? I don't well, think so. Yeah, Seth McFarlane should have been on the flight. Um yeah, the, like nine eleven. He missed it. Yeah. Like nine eleven, there was quite a few of people going in. They like went there, forgot their camera. Ian Thorpe, I think, was one of them, forgot his camera, went back to the hotel and the, yeah. it happened. There was yeah. a dude in Europe, there was a guy in, when the Brussels bombing happened who was involved in three terrorist attacks. Like he was in like the London one, the Paris one, and the Brussels one, or something. What like in the funny. middle of them all. Osama kind of bin Laden. Yeah. See, that's 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 <laughs> that's that's, yeah, that's lucky the other way. Involved in, um, <laughs> what do you mean? He was yeah, involved. involved in he wasn't involved. He was um, a, a victim. victim. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna. <laughs> we're not just. Okay. Well, anyway, so I think. Yeah. I think you'll find um, it's quite common. <laughs> good old, good old mate, Conte though. Good on him. Hey. Yeah. Um, Getting back to things uh, and being talking about millionaires and stars and stuff. Bills, are you going to be a superstar on Netflix? No, we didn't make the cut. Did you got you guys didn't make the cut either, eh? Well, we made. I think they wanted us to, and we told them to. We're happy without. Oh, it. this is that drive to mm. survive series they're Essentially, doing. Essentially, yeah. So what they're doing is, yeah, like 
like for me, Drive to Survive is the, is the series that follows Formula One. And I never followed Formula One. I didn't know anything about it. And then I watched this series and I was suddenly an F1 fan. And then yeah. I was so G'd. And then the F1 season started, 2020, when it all started back on. Watched the first F1 race because I was suddenly a huge F1 fan. And fuck, it was boring. So <laughs> I, uh, I'm still I'm a fan of the TV show and, and suddenly know all these drivers. But I wouldn't have known any of them before. But anyway... It's it's made salaries and everything go through the roof. I mean, they were already overpaid, but well, hugely paid. Um, but Netflix is doing the same thing with cycling, so they're going to follow eight teams through the Tour de France or through the whole season. I don't know if it's just the tour or if it's the whole season or whatever. I think it's just but, the tour. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I reckon it'd be good, eh? Like, yeah. I, I was flying back from Milan Torino last night, actually, and I was talking to a couple of my teammates about it. I think it's going to be really good for the exposure. Like, obviously, the exposure to Tour de France is already huge. Like, it's the most watched annual sporting event in the world. But to grow the sport as a whole, you know, to like talk yeah. about, they'll talk about preparations and all that stuff and to get a real good insight because there is lots behind the scene in cycling, eh? There is lots. Oh, and, it, and, it's, and it's really similar to Formula One or any, any sport in, in a sense where it's the same athletes effectively. It's just, it's the same teams everywhere. It's like a yeah. it's a it's a traveling circus, you know. It's not like every race is so independent from each other that it's completely different people. It's always the same people in a sense. And you get to see those little like interactions that are like between teammates that you'd never see, you know, on the bus when when like we saw a little bit with the Movistar documentary, you know, when it was like you saw all the team Hayden on Quintana, and then you saw like the stuff mm. with Soler on the in the Andorra stage and the you know and you saw these little mm. dramas that actually happen all the time but no one has any idea about you know like some guy wasn't there in the lead out and to the viewer they just didn't even register that the guy was sitting down the back when he was meant to be on the front but then they get in the bus they turn the they turn the TV on and they see all the the sprinter come in and you know where the mm. fuck were you rah, 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 or whatever I don't know not that that normally happens if you've got a nice guy as a sprinter but um and also the interactions i think it's going to be the most interesting is is between rivals or between like you know how you yeah. you get on the bus sometimes and you go oh my god what was that guy doing today and then everyone just piles on and go yeah he was you know and it's just a massive pile on some guy from another team and no one mm -hmm. even knows about it so well, I, 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 I think the hardest thing is like, remember when they did the series for Amazon with Green Edge in 2017 and they had like massive crew. So a production this big is going to have heaps of crew. So heaps mm -hmm. of camera guys. They're going to want to wire the bus up with microphones and almost probably have fixed cameras in, you know, every, every orifice. And it's full exposure in terms of opening yourself up at the most stressful race of the year. Oh, yeah. And that part of it, that you're not on it is awesome because that adds such another layer of stress. And as bike riders, people getting into your space, uh, that'd do my fucking head in. Well, you look mm. how you present yourself to the world, right? Like you, if imagine if you were shown to the whole world, just how you are at a bike race when you're super stressed out and you're tired and you're mm. whatever. And in, in back in Rabobank, they did a documentary series similar kind of thing and they had cameras in the bus like always on and so when they wanted to talk about something that they were <laughs> this is pretty bad actually when they wanted to talk about something that they didn't want on camera they would all just get their dicks out and they would just stand there <laughs> they would all take their pants off to, talk, to have like a serious conversation that they didn't want on camera because then they could never use it yeah but what if yeah, they had it bleeped it out it bleeped just the dicks out like blocked it out that could have burned guys it. standing around with their dicks out Yelling at each other because one of them had fucked up. What, what do you reckon? I um, I um, yeah, so I learned yesterday that the, the contracts are, real, are quite strict. So it wasn't like Netflix and the like, so in Drive to Survive with Netflix and Mercedes or whatever, that they have a bit of the teams have a little bit of a say in where the cameras are going to go. So they might say, look, we don't want any cameras in the hotel rooms, for example. Um, but once those like th those locations are decided, and the cameras on they have the teams have no say in editing or anything so no. the moment that footage the, the moment that footage is recorded onto a camera that belongs to netflix Ooh. and netflix alone so they can't that they there's if a sports director's in the car at the tour de france and he says something in the car and, go, and then he goes to netflix and goes oh i don't want that in the show netflix go mate if we want it in there it's going in there 
So th that's where it's going to get real tricky oh. because surely it's going to create a situation mm. where people where will be you, fired. Where yeah, it's gonna it's gonna create a, a couple of different situations. It's gonna create a situation where a team's gonna be having like dummy meetings, like pre-race dummy meetings on the bus and doing mm. their real meeting, doing their real meeting in the in the rooms. I mean, it, I guess it doesn't really matter if you do your real meeting on the bus because it's gonna be posted after the race, so the meetings are less relevant. Still, you know, there's, there's um, secrets you give away. There's tech, you know, mm. there's a lot you're gonna you. It's all out for everyone to see, isn't it? Like yeah, because you, you're going to get a real magnifying glass on the psychology of teams, especially when teams are on at the pump. Like, how does a team that uh, you know, let's say Roglic is going there, and all of a sudden he loses, he has a bad day, and he loses two and a half minutes on one climb. Then how do they? How does Jumbo assess it? How what what's their like tactic they deploy? What's the psychology you, behind it? But also you, like another thing, what mm, you go. Jesse, I I, I, I just had a really good idea to. I'll tell you after this how you can fuck other guys over. Keep going. Yeah. Um, and also, like it's like you said, George, like the spotlight's on all these different people. And the bike riders probably didn't. I, I imagine the bike riders that are going to go to the Tour de France didn't have any say in whether this was going to happen or not. Like the, the team's upper management are the ones negotiating with Netflix. And they go, hey, mm. boys, just to let you know, you're going to be on a Netflix show at the Tour de France this year. Mm -hmm. Now the whole world's going to see if you're a, a fuckwit or not. But so it's like, also you don't know, like like... Like I'm sure I could put together a 30 second reel of you over the Tour de France, even though you might be the nicest guy on the team, and I could you you know you could say the wrong thing that's maybe meant as a joke or slightly mm. controversial or whatever. And like, like I imagine Daniel Ricciardo, right? He in this he's the driver, Australian driver who plays up to the camera a lot and drive to survive. Mm. He might be a real nice guy, but in the first season of that, I was like, man, is this this guy's completely cooked. But I think mm. he's just playing up to the camera, and I think he's probably a super nice guy. Hmm. yeah but that's the what? thing is that what i was trying to say is like everybody uh, are you going to get the everybody is going to act quite differently to how they normally would be mm. like they're not going to be as relaxed relaxed on the team bus it's not people's personalities are going to be it's like when we first started this fucking show and we didn't know what we could say or what we could do i mean obviously we still know there's some lines but we get closer and closer to them every day and um you know because you get more comfortable but like these guys aren't going to be comfortable so it's they could just be on the bus, like it could, be the worst, it could be the worst three weeks for those guys. Is Jumbo doing it? A Jumbo on board with the project? Yeah, I think so. It's eight so teams, and I mean, I'm I'm super happy it's happening, and I'm really happy I'm mm. we're not one of them. So I would, if I was you, George, I'd write write up maybe because stages thirteen to sixteen is. I don't know if it's the same with the riders. That's when you're mentally fried because you're so far from Paris mm. and you're so cooked from the first couple of weeks. So I don't know how you like right? stages 13 to 16. I don't know if it's the same for the riders, but that's when you're mentally fried. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what I was isn't, like. isn't the Tour de France about right? right no, well, I'm, I'm talking purely from support staff. You know, we don't have to do the riding, but I, they, those stages used to cook me. So I would strategically ride up alongside a guy at Yumbo and just go. Mate, I I can't believe what I eavesdropped and heard this morning. They go, why? What are you talking about? I heard some of those Netflix crew talking about a conversation where such and such said you you're a fucking knob. <laughs> what? You know he, they were talking about it. like they can't believe like the backstabbing that's going on in your team. They go, ah, oh, yeah, fuck whatever about that. I'd just be playing with their heads all the time. I'd be an asshole mm. just to get competitive advantage to cause shit where they start dodging. Like yeah, but then you get on the bus and there's massive character assassination when you get on the... What what worries me is, even though I'm not in this documentary, I have... I'm notoriously... get you know, I'll get under people's skin in a race by mm. mistake, but it happens, whatever. <laughs> and I just know there's going to be a scene where one Netflix is just an absolute character assassination of this guy called George Bennett on... You know what I mean, and no yeah. one knows who I am because I'm not in the in the in the thing. But actually, just a quick diversion of character. Let's get back to remind me to tell you something about character assassination in a minute. Once mm. we finish talking about Netflix, I heard a great one live on TV the other day. That, but you're right though. Like that's what I was sort of getting at. I was trying to. I, I think it's quite a cool. I think it's cool that they're doing that. But I'm trying to play devil's mm. advocate a bit. But there's uh, there's going to be millions of cycling fans who watch Tour de France every year all around the world. Who are going to for for different reasons leave this Tour de France with favourites like people they like and people they hate, yeah, and because of the Netflix show, like when you watch Formula One, like you actually, mate, 
like Lewis Hamilton, you're like, oh, yeah, fucking hell. Max Verstappen, oh, what a fucking flog. But ultimately, like, they're probably <laughs> sweet dudes. But like, <laughs> well, I don't know. If so true. true. But the All ones right? I feel for in that drive to survive is like that German owner or whatever for Haas. Haas. You know, he's, he's got the Russian he's... driver. Yeah, I know. Well, that, that, that'll that be interesting for the next season. Gunther. Like, yeah. yeah. He's gone. But, but he's the he's guy gone. that he's always gone... What the fuck is going on with the engine? <laughs> this is just <laughs> bullshit. And then he's got to explain to guys that haven't paid their bills. And then <laughs> he has this crisis meeting with his team. And he goes, guys, guys, if we don't improve, we're fucked. You know, it's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's the same thing. And they, they can't they can't get results because the cars are so <laughs> the shit. Shittest car, they've shit got no money. <laughs> and then they've yeah. got these con men that bloody, they put all their logos on the car and then they fucking dodge the, the money and the bills. And then he's yeah. just sitting there going, ah, ah, it's I so don't funny know what because to do. there's this director, or he might even be the manager, I don't know, of Bora Hansgrohe, who's a German guy who's a doppelganger for him. Oh, yeah. And um, he was a writer back in the day in T Mobile. I'm trying to think of his bloody name. Oh, Foldag. No. Uh, nah, it's not Aldag. It's, he's not in it. He's in, um, no, he isn't Bora. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe he it's in exactly a doppelganger like for the half yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. funny. Every time I look at him, I just think of him going, guys, just yeah. slamming the table yeah. in the bus. <laughs> and then the, the, when those cars stall at the start, you know, like they're the, that's the biggest fuck up. Or when they do a really shit pit stop. You know, it's always the some bloke who's cooked. When the guy the didn't nut. put the wheel on properly. Yeah, he fucks the nut up. And then you just see these guys in helmets just like sitting like that. Oh, man. But be, be being the team... Being the team principal of a Formula One team would had to be one of the most stressful managerial roles in sport, eh? But being oh, yeah. the being the team principal of a Formula One team that shit that's just scraping the barrel for sponsors and's got a fucking terrible car must be like you couldn't get paid enough. You couldn't pay me enough to do that shit. What nah. were you telling about? What were you saying? I saw you put something about Toto Wolf the other day, the the Mercedes yeah. guy. Yeah, because have you watched the current season? Nah, nah, haven't oh. seen the new one yet. I've only watched four episodes, but he just orders breakfast like an absolute fucklet. Oh. Like, and I <laughs> like just want, mate. It's just like, so I want, like, and... like, I want pumpernickel toast, but I need it cooked to exactly this, like, so it's oh, crispy, but no, off, it's not. Mate. I'm like, mate, just, and this, this poor waitress is standing there just like, so, so I just put it in the toaster and push it, put it down. Like, what the uh, fuck do you want me to do? I'm, I'm so glad oh. they lost the championship then as a result. That's karma. For ordering mm. pump and nickel. Yeah. So character assassination, while we were mm. while we we're talking about I was watching a lot of cycling last week because it was I was, you know, no, I'm just sitting at home by myself, training and Terreno and um Paranese. Paranese were on. So there's a lot of cycling to watch. And it got me thinking about I started like listening to all these commentators, and there's been a bit of a shift in cycling commentating. And I think currently we have some awesome commentators like you know we've got robbie McEwen's now come across to gcn they do an awesome job of watching all the stuff which is crazy that for some reason he what sbs let him go i mean that was one of the great combos was keenan and and robbie um but anyway robbie's now over on um gcn on gcn and what what (laughs) i had to laugh at one thing these guys were saying they were they were riding along and they were the guys uh, johnny moscon was doing the tt and I think it was Carlton Kirby. And they were talking about like, oh, here's Johnny Moscon. And they're like, you know, I always get the feeling with this guy, he's he's really trying to prove something. And then Carlton Kirby's like, yeah, I think he's really just trying to show that somewhere deep, deep, deep down inside, he might be a nice guy. But it's really deep down inside. And I was, wow. just, sitting there, and I was just sitting there like, these guys are just piling on him, just huge character assassination. Then they just go, and here is uh, Balcomolima. And then they just go to another guy, like nothing had happened. I was like, okay. what did Johnny do to him? I don't know. Huh. I don't know he's, he's pissed, pissed, he's pissed yeah. Kirby off. <laughs> pretty funny, though. And that, it's, a pretty, it's pretty rough from a commentator just to start, like, <laughs> like judging people's character, eh? Like, Good bike rider, shit bike bloke. Ride. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we we had to get to after the Netflix series. It's going to be like yeah. it's just every single commentator is just going to be refer, referencing back to the, what this person did in the Netflix series, like for years to come. Well, we had a big incident with um, character assassinations 
uh, in Australia overnight. So the footy season started and um, there was a coach had to do – they have to do presses after the oh, game. Was this the reporter after? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this yeah. Is, it's, yeah, this it's blown. It's blown up. So he says to this reporter, like the reporter asked some question, and this team played off in the grand final last year, like the Super Bowl, and they got beaten. And the reporter goes for the rival team. So he asks this spicy question, and the coach who's got like a handlebar mustache looks like a bloody thug. Like you don't want to fuck with this guy. He just starts getting like glazed over red eyes. And he goes, you know what? you got a lot of nerve asking a question in here, Tom. You know, who goes for Melbourne? You've been sniping this club for years and just starts ripping him a new one, right? And this Tom, he goes, in fact, you know what? Get out. You're not welcome here. Get out. He goes, no, I won't. This is an AFL press conference. And I'm saying, he goes, oh, is it? You're proud of what you do, that gutter journalism? Everyone's sitting in the room going, oh, shit, this is awkward. Anyway, the coach gets slammed on the radio this morning, absolutely baked. Like, oh, he's... People need to check in. He's really struggling. He shouldn't have done what he did. Blah, blah, blah. Then at about four o'clock today, and this is like modern world now, an audio message has leaked where he's talked about this reporter who everyone felt sorry for. He's talked about someone at Fox who is a reporter and she happens to be lesbian. And he's just said this real inappropriate rant about how, you know, she's really attractive and yeah, you know, she's lesbian or whatever. And it's leaked and now he's been sacked. Really? So the space sacked. They're letting go. He's gone. He probably won't work in footy again. So in oh, the space wow. of 24 hours, this guy's like, everyone's feeling sorry for him, whatever. Then through WhatsApp, it was like a voice message he left for his mates or whatever. And um, yeah, not saying what he said was bang on, but it, it just shows like, you know, how it can turn in 24 hours. It's almost like people are storing this stuff and then yeah. But that's gone. the modern world, isn't it? Like you, everything's traceable now. Emails, yep, everything, messages. I mean, actually, holy shit, this is. Uh, I mean, let's not get into it too much. But I was trying to unpack the story about the, you know, the New Zealand current New Zealand road champion. You know, there's a lot going on. Women's road champion. There's a lot going on there with like, um, you know, there's under investigation. She was in this, and there was a story that came out last week, Olivia Ray about. I couldn't make I I needed a diagram mm. to unpack this story. It was it was this crazy I've got no I still don't have no idea what's going on in that situation but and so you know I don't know if she's she, you know she obviously sounds like a really terrible situation for everyone but there was basically what what's happened is there was these messages that have been leaked and and that's caused this this um is it ASADA or USADA uh, anti-drug, anti-doping investigation? But it was all, you know, it was all intertwined with this crazy mm. boyfriend that was, you know, everyone was, rest- there were two friends restraining orders and, and there was just this huge uh, mess. Geez. And all and all just because of, you know, there were some messages that, that got leaked. Same thing, you know, and then they just mm. sunk. Gone. Mm. And that's so shit because like, Nobody knows what the situation with Olivia Ray right yeah, is. Exactly. Like, and all that the only the only thing that, that you hear are rumors because this, mm. art, this I mean this article tried they, they did their best on Psych and Tips to try to, to explain something because like actually it was kind of good they did it because their team, Olivia Ray's team, hasn't done anything. Like they just mm. they just took her off the roster and just like now they just acknowledge. They just don't even acknowledge that she was part of ever part of the team, and everyone's going. Didn't they do the a press release there? or anything? No, nothing. nothing. She just disappeared from so the UCI website. That's one hundred and one. So then, so then everyone's going, "What the hell's happening here?" And then, like this, these messages have been leaked, and this article has been written. But like, at no point can you decipher what the hell has she done or what the hell has happened to her. Yeah. So then, all these rumors just start flying around. And this poor girl's going, like, probably sitting at home, like, I'm sure she's upset. Somebody just mm. come out and say what the fuck's going on, so we know. Yeah, I, I could not unpack that article away, but something's yeah. going on there. So, um, yeah. but that's more yeah. after COVID. Like everyone's cooked, but everyone's just like hanging to like, come on, what's the story? Mm. And then they just like pile it on. Oh man, I, I reckon that they're saying that the trends now with this next generation, they're getting off socials. Like they, 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 the oh, young yeah. kids now are going. Nah, you know what? I've seen the older people. They're all fucking cooked, and we're done. 
I like, hope that. I hope that. Imagine case. if you could go back to the days where like everyone just goes, you know what? Fuck these mobile phones. Let's go back to landlines. And if you've ringed oh, someone and they're the not home, they're the not home. The worst people in the world are on social media, especially on like Twitter and and oh yeah, they are the worst people. And they just become more and more insane. And it's actually like the more outrageous you are, the more insane you are, you your content or the more controversial or the more whatever, your content becomes more visible. Like you, the algorithm is actually made for that like hot takes get prioritized. So if you're mm. just a psychopath, like extreme right, extreme left, whatever, mm. you know, this hot take on like if you wear a mask, you're a coward or if you don't wear a mask you're going to hell you know what i mean if you just if you live in the extremes of this polarization you just your content gets pushed forward and becomes this crazy thing where everyone just becomes more and more psycho speaking of content it's, how's daryl limpy going uh, uh the, i don't know i don't know yeah <laughs> sort of throw a wedge in there shout, I've watched shout out to dazzler yeah, yeah. um, um Oh, there's no doubt the safest thing to do if you're a high profile person is to not use social media because Just shut down, eh? Yeah, because if you don't even have to say anything with any intent or any, and someone's going to pick, pick what, it apart. What about the spicy shit with Kanye West that just dropped? Like all these leaked messages. Did you see uh, that? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not up with, I'm not up with current affairs. <laughs> Bullshit. Isn't that your it's one of your categories. <laughs> Kanye West was messaging um, uh, Kim Kardashian's new boyfriend. What's his name? The comedian. I don't know, mate. I, you, you're about you lost me. You lost well, me. You said, well, I, I, I was, no I, one no cares, bro. Uh, uh, I'll let it go. Um, <laughs> did you, speaking of speaking of um, forgetting, I'll just go back and show me not knowing anything. Shut up! You, Shut up! Did you see Vinegar's post-race interview? Just a loser. What? <laughs> Can't win we're in there. Just fuck it. everyone gagging up on me. I might as well go on Twitter. Fuck it. Get off the show. Leave it to me. Yo, get, get out of here. Get get out of here. Go spend by yourself for five minutes. Come Hi, back. boys. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. He's gone. He's gone. Did you see Vinegar's post race interview? Yeah, I did. You're getting closer and closer to the blue jersey. Now you can dream it. Yeah. Congrats, sir. Oh, sorry. You're closer and closer to the blue jersey. Which which jersey is the blue one? Uh, the the leader jersey. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I I'm I'm more far behind. I mean, uh, yeah. What is his name? Uh, it's a it's a classic interview. It's so funny. Like we need more of that stuff. But yeah. you're right. Like you've you've got it. You must know who's got. He knows. It's it's more like a mind. It's like the mind games you're talking about. So he pretends he doesn't know somebody. You know, when you pretend you don't mm. know somebody's name, to to, you know, like just downplay why, it. Why all. would you do it though? To look cooler, or because you end up looking. Well, we're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's a. I think it's a self confidence thing. Like you know, you want to. It's it's more like a power play. I I don't know. I, guess I can see how him. he. I can see how he would wouldn't know that the blue jersey was necessarily the leader's jersey, but you by that point you've done three stages, and but you also, know like, who you know who's leading the race. Doesn't matter what color the guy said; it was pretty obvious he was talking about getting close to the lead. Like he wasn't getting close yeah. to the sprint jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I call bullshit. I think you're right, George. But it was, it was pretty playing. funny though. He was obviously he was obviously fried from the finish, and he like couldn't. There's someone's slammed a microphone in his face before he's even had a moment to yeah catch it is his hard eh? mm. well he'll be in uh drive to survive for the tour won't he <laughs> that'll be, yeah. that'll be, i'm looking forward to that he'll be good eh oh, yeah, um good. so yeah last time we had this last time we caught up we were talking about Pogacar's dominance that continued last week he obviously took the piss in torino mm. um yates he was flying at yates he was flying in Paranese. Yeah, he's looking good for uh, the Giro. He's got to be a favourite, eh, at the moment? Oh, it'd have to be. And I think it works good that, um, you know, Pog and the Rog are going to be boxing on at the Tour. And then, you know, obviously uh, Bernal's not going to be riding the Giro. Opens the door up for the old Yates, you can. Mm. Yes, you can. The, the, worst the, was that year that, the worst was that year that we thought Espan was going to win the Giro 
the one the year that you were at Bill's in 2016 and the poor bastards went and got a car made up with the pink stickers ready to go for that oh, final no. drive and he fucking got rolled on that last day by Nibbly. And they got yeah, a car made. Yeah, they got it wrapped in pink. And oh. so they yeah, didn't get to use it. I heard Shattered. an Italian story about suspicion when you know about superstition, sorry, when um when pre uh today won the tour the first time after the time trial. So they brought all the way for the last day. So the time trial was a penultimate day. He was wearing the white jersey, best young rider. So they the guy from Colonago arrives the day before the TT with this white bike. Um, this white frame, they're building it up. So when you ride into Paris, you do the lap around in the mm. in the Champs Elysees. Fucking hell, I'm slow this morning. Well, you're like vinegar, vinegar, oh, vinegar. Yeah. vinegar. Yeah. And uh, so you do the whites in, in the white and the white bikes ride around. So the day in the morning of the TT, they were building up his white bike, and they were like, "Oh, but you know, he can still win the Tour de France. You know, there's still a time trial." And you know, they're like, "Did you?" Why and he said he looked out the window, saw the building. He's like, "Why are you building the white one? Do you not, do you not believe in me or whatever?" You know. And the the Italian guy was like, "Oh, I I didn't bring the the yellow one all the way from Italy to France. You know, it was like a eight hundred k drive or something because it's bad luck." Ah. Because like, okay. they didn't want to curse it. You know that had yeah, yeah, that's made. smart. So they didn't want to drive all the way. So of course he wins the TT. This poor bloke from Colonago has to drive eight hundred k back through the oh. night. 800k, so 1600k of driving to pick up this frame so it can be built through the night so he can ride it on the shop. So he was the go. only guy that when he won, he's just like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, he was <laughs> the only guy that was disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it'd be, true, it'd be a true story as well because the Italians yeah. are super superstitious, eh? Oh, very. Like, right. you drop the salt even at the. Mm. Do you buy into that? I mean, the black cat one's fuck always no. like. I mean, I've never been killed by a lot of cats um, that happen to be black, but I I literally have heard stories of a guy that will, one guy in particular I know, who if a black cat crosses the road in front of him, he won't ride through that way if he can help it. He'll try and find a different way because he's like, no, nah, that is bad luck. No, I don't buy it. Like the, in cycling, the salt the salt shaker is a massive superstition amongst Italian people, basically. Well, it's like where, dumb and dumber. Yeah, it's well, no, it's like you, you, you spilt the salt. It, That's not even the matter. About, it's not even about spilling it. It's about handing it. You don't uh. hand it to someone directly. So, like, if I was to hand you the salt, I'd have to put it on the table in front of you, and then you'd pick it up off the table. You wouldn't pick uh. it up. Well, you never hand someone. But there's that yeah. famous Lance story that Lance was at the table with that guy, and he spilt salt. So what you meant to do is throw it over your left shoulder, right? If you spilled the salt, mm. you meant to grab a little bit off the table, throw it over the shoulder. To, to and everyone looked at him like. You're going to throw it over your shoulder? And he's just like, fuck you guys, idiots. Like, it's, of course, it's not real. Anyway, the next day, Crash breaks both his legs. Hmm. Well, but, well, I, like, yeah, of course, I, it's absolute I, I, bullshit. Of I remember course being, bullshit. Yeah. I remember being at the Giro in 2009, true story, and I was doing interviews with riders about crashes. You know, what's your worst crash and that? And then Heinrich Hauser goes, oh, I've never really had a bad crash. Oh, touch oh. wood. And he goes, Mate, you shouldn't be asking people about crashes. And I said, why is that? He goes, it's bad luck. No shit that day. He had a horrific crash and ripped off half his left butt cheek. Um, oh, wow. That stage. Mm. Yep. My fault. So, Let's get out of here. They, We're talking about crashes. We're talking about crashes. We're... That's it. That's it. Mm. All right. So. San Remo, who's your picks is going to be after, but we can. Let's do our San Remo picks anyway, because then we can. Um, we can. Well, well, people will know people if we're full of shit or not. Yeah, yeah people will know if we're full of shit or not. Mads All Pedersen. Right. Oh. He's not doing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you sure? Why is he not doing it? Because Sturvin's going all in for Sturvin. Yeah, well, I, I can never understand that. Why not put two guys in in case one of them shit? No. Mm. Uh, he's not it's doing not it. Like... Unless, unless something's changed since Perry Nice, but he's not doing it. That's Caleb Ewan. I like how the, I actually just watched the Detour podcast, Jonesy, our sister podcast that Jonesy does with Iffy. Mm. And you, you're, you're, when they said, who's your picks, you just straight away went Caleb. 
And yeah. the space, that, that was 15 minutes ago. No, that was 46 yeah. minutes ago. And now he's saying Mads Peterson. <laughs> he's not even doing it. <laughs> Shit, done he's done he's he's talking about throwing blokes under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to mix it up, mate. Just having a go. <laughs> Just a young battler having a go. Getting Fuzzing shot down goes. by you all the time. Jürgen Vanderbrook. Starting to get a big head, Bills. Oh, big head Billy. <laughs> Mr. Perfect. What's Stephen King's first novel? <laughs> oh, I can't fuck. I still don't know the answer. As soon as no. I knew I'd lost, I just walk stage left. <laughs> <laughs> Got out my head. No, uh, I, like reckon... I, I like the Caleb pick because I want Caleb to win. Yeah. Well, I want I want Bling to win. Um, but if I, I, it would be cool to see Caleb win because he's been close twice now. Mm. Um, I think it's going to be it's, be it's going to be a different it's going to be a different San Remo to what it's been in previous years because. Ooh, the wind air. will make him. <coughs> ooh, uh, air. There, it'll be the ooh, uh, air show potentially, mm. but it, will, it it depends on the wind on the suppressor. All depends on the wind. If there's yeah. if there's a headwind on the pog on the pogio, there will be pogio. But there I think be... I think I think it'll start. I think the suppressor is going to be way more way more part of the race than what it has been. Mm. Like they always got the the suppressor fast, but there's still like eighty guys that get over it, and then the yeah. race goes on the pogio. But I think. UAE is going to go with Pogacar there, full gas up the Chapressa, try to get rid of every sprinter or at least pin every sprinter. Yeah. But the thing with the Chapressa, even though it's a long, so about a 12 minute climb, um, it's actually okay in the wheels, if it's a, and especially if it's a headwind. So it's going to depend. If it's a tailwind, better chance to do so. Always splits on that downhill. And then if you've got numbers there, you can maybe try to keep it away and then Pog can just jump away from a smaller group on the Poggio. But It'd be interesting, mm. eh? I think Pogacar is obviously like a favourite. Um, Van Aert, Caleb. Mm. Mm. So, what about uh, Ala Philippe? Not there. He's not, not going that great. Not go- oh, jeez. Right, I'll stay out of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fucking hell. No, he's got yeah, bronchitis. Yeah. He was going. He was going, but he's crook. Oh, just um, one, one interesting story to finish on. None to do with San Remo is. Someone shit themselves on the bike. Nah, but just as niggly was out training in Andorra the other day and I didn't go out with the boys, but I caught up with them at the end, you know, and rode the last little bit. And they told me this story of story of the day, what had happened to them. And one of the boys had gone down the bottom because it's cold as hell. You leave the house um, and it's, you know, like three or four degrees or minus three or four up the top of yeah. where I live. Go down. You fully kitted up. So he had some efforts, took his jacket off and for some reason took his helmet off and just left it at the bottom of this climb and did some like intervals right down the bottom. Gets back, someone has flogged his helmet, his jacket, his gloves, everything. But the niggliest bit is his apartment keys were in his. Oh, no. So he's done a five hour ride, <laughs> completely oh. cracked, can't get into his house. Oh. Well, he must that's have ridden big... past Black Cat. Mm. That's, a, that's a bit of a mistake, eh? That's a fuck up, though. Leaving your keys. Yeah. And, like, I, I, I only leave stuff that I'm prepared to have stolen. Yeah. Mm. How did he get in? It's like when, it's like when, you, no, when you go to the airport, you drive to the airport. When people drive to the airport and they put their car keys in their suitcase. Oh. Uh, bad keep idea. Keep them in your hand luggage, mate. Hand luggage. Fact, keep them always need shoes, passport, keys. Mm-hmm. Well, there's an old saying in Norwegian I learned yesterday that uh, it's, it's the three P's. It doesn't quite work in English, but the the three words in Norwegian all start with P. So in English, an English translation is if when you're traveling, you need your three P's: your passport, your wallet, and your condoms. If you got those three, you're fine. No condoms. You, you put the money and your <laughs> protector. Yeah, no, pres- no, I think it's preserver, preserver. Oh, something. yeah, pres- yeah, preserver. Yeah. Oh. You, you need your ball so and ball preserver sure. and yeah, your weed I'm worker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. What are you? That's you it. Your ball right. shaver, your nose and butthole shaver, your ball toner, and your ball deodorant. And your yeah. you need That's it. Your weed Whenever whacker, you travel. your lawnmower 4.0, your ball toner, and your ball deodorant. Yeah. And you're good. Right. All right, That's it. I'm out of here. I'm done. So okay. before you before you guys travel, before you guys travel, make sure you got those four things. Get them off manscaped.com. Use 
use the code SDP20, 20% off and free shipping. Yeah. Next time you travel, your balls will smell beautiful. Take that to the guy who skipped in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Good luck trying to find the ad this week. Stick that up your <laughs> cleanly shaven <laughs> bum hole. <laughs> See you later.